what does it mean when someone is slain in the spirit? That's when someone basically falls down during a service because they're so overwhelmed with the spirit. They call it slain like they were stabbed or something, I guess, and they just kind of, oh. Along with the same line as the last one when we're talking about tongues, there is no description in scripture of such things happening. There's nothing in scripture about people being so overwhelmed with the spirit that they pass out, fall over, collapse. That's not in scripture at all. It's not something that's even talked about by the spiritual writers until about the 20th century. That's just out there. I mean, it it could have happened, but people just didn't talk about it. Again, I make no judgment calls. I don't know what one could call it. Again, it could be that someone is just so overwhelmed with the presence of God that they just can't handle it and they literally just pass out. That it's somebody who's so filled with things that there's no way to express it except to just collapse. It could be anything. I don't pass judgment. I don't say that it's one thing or the other. I just say that that's what it is. And if it happens to somebody and it brings them closer to God, go for it. If it's something that happens and becomes a source of spiritual pride, well, anything that doesn't lead us to God is not from God. So depending on your personal situation, if whatever you're doing is bringing you closer to God and not puffed up in spiritual pride, then continue to do it. If it's not bringing you to God, it's not of God. And I would try to steer away from it. We had a service here once several years ago. I don't remember the priest or priest that came here, but it had to do with um, things that happened in Medjugorje. Mm-hmm. And I witnessed, and we all witnessed, and anybody that was here, that um, a couple of people, they always would pass out to the black And somebody was always there that helped them as they fell down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what she said was that there was a service here several years ago where there was a priest who had been invited and they did a service that was similar to what they have in Medjugorje and that there were people who had done that, passed out, for lack of a better word, with people there to catch them and things, people that she had met or known personally. Again, if it brings people closer to God. I guess they always did any Well, it's true that when they always have these services, there's always a few people who do. But then a skeptic, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I know that's funny, devil's advocate, right? If I were just being a skeptic, is it because they came to the service that this happened to them? Or were they already disposed to it before they came? You see what I'm saying? Is it possible that the people who come to these services are people who were already open to the possibility that if it happens, it happens, and because of that, it's more likely to happen? Or is it that it just happens because it's such an overwhelming experience that that's the only response? Again, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm not saying anything negative or positive either way. I'm just saying, I've known people who go to all of those services and who also always pass out themselves. But if you knew how they are, they're also very emotional people who are very dedicated to the Lord, who are very much at every kind of prayer service that are always there trying to do something to pray and do something, you know, for others. They're already kind of disposed to anything that the Spirit wants. So for me, it's not impossible to imagine that A service like that draws people that are already open. And if it happens, it happens. As opposed to it happens because people just happen to be there. See what I'm saying? So again, no criticism. I'm not saying it's positive or negative. I'm trying to keep the neutral thing. You know, the church has no stance on it one way or the other. In fact, there's a charismatic renewal, you know, that happened from years ago. It's mostly fizzled out in most places. There are some places where it's still strong, but the majority of places, it's not so strong. But again, the way I look at it is, and I've said this from the beginning, if you remember from all of our different question and answers, all of our other things, 
If someone is doing something that brings them closer to God and is not um, condemned by the church, why should I care if they like it or not? If I like it and it's bringing me closer to God and it's not condemned, nobody else should have a say in it. Conversely, if they're doing something that's not my particular spirituality, but it's not condemned by the church, and it's bringing them closer to God, who am I to tell them to stop it because it's not right? I'll give you an example. If somebody feels like praying the Our Father like this, verses like this, or like this, as long as what they're doing is bringing them closer to God, should I tell them, you need to do it this way, or you need to do it this way, or you need to do it this way, or you need to hold someone's hand when you do it. Does it matter? Honestly. If what I'm doing brings me closer to God and is not condemned by the church, should anybody else tell me that I'm wrong in what I'm doing? People will say that. They will. You're right. They will say it because it's not what they want. But what happens if they go somewhere and someone tells them to change? Well, suddenly it's World War III. Who are you to tell me how to worship? But that doesn't mean that I won't tell you how to do it. You'll notice that as a priest and even as, as you know, pastor, I'm not telling people, you need to do it this way, you need to do it that way. As you've heard from the sermons and everything, I've been here two months, I'm not telling people to change anything about what they're doing. Now, if they're doing something that's disruptive or something that's impeding something or something that's causing problems in some way, we'll have a discussion privately. But until something like that happens, and I hope it doesn't. Are there any other questions about this one?